Oh, hi. Hey, um, is anyone here for the, for the content? You, you should be dancing right now. I don't, I don't know what you're doing here. I mean, I would be you, I would go dancing. So, I, I, seriously, I wouldn't mind. Because uh, the cameras, you have to go on the stage. Oh, I have to go on the stage, but they're far away. I know. I, you, you, could, uh, if any of you want to come closer, it will feel a little bit less awkward. But, I, I mean, I don't want to, to, to pressure you or anything. Um, I'm said I have to stay on the stage. Uh, is it okay if I sit on the stage? It's okay for the, the camera. Oh, hey. <laughs> so, I'm Jeremy, and you should all be dancing right now. We, we can speak of the, the issue at any other moment, you know, during the day, uh, when they're, they're cleaning up the, the big techno sound systems, you can come and meet me and we can discuss those issues. But there's really no, no reason to, to keep you away from the dance floors right now. Um, so feel free anytime to go and leave. There's a, well, Nortec Collective is at midnight, I think, uh, the Salon de Baile. But anyway, <laughs> for those who still want to, to, to stay, um, uh, I'm Jeremy Zimmerman. I used to be an activist. Uh, I'm a recovering activist. I'm a, a recovering uh, burnout as well. Um, you may have heard of an organization called La Quadrature du Net that I, I founded uh, eight years ago that defends uh, freedoms online. And for um, about seven years, I was a full, 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 full time activist in this organization, being a spokesperson, its main coordinator, uh, analyst, campaigner, graphic designer, media puppet, uh, sometimes organizing uh, drinking events and, and cleaning up afterwards, and, uh, and these kind of things. Uh, you may remember epic fights in the European Parliament, such as ACTA, the telecoms package, or um, the, the youngest uh, among you may, may, not even, uh, may, may not even remember. Uh, the, the point is uh, that you've heard uh, before a few, a few talks by fellow activists. You may, if you, you're here, if you're still here and not dancing, I don't know, maybe you, you broke a leg or something, or, or maybe you, you're, I don't know, maybe you just don't like music after all. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe you're just interested in the topic genuinely because you feel that there is a problem with the internet being privatized, censored, surveilled, and that we lost the, the, the tiny bubble we had to express ourselves. So you're concerned about that. Maybe some of you are uh, activists and, and the term is also, yeah, down with borders and, and terms and, and everything. It's not about being an activist. It's about being active. It's about doing something. It's about trying to, to change things on some level, on some system, trying to, to hack something to make it work better. Maybe some of you are doing that, um, some of you that are not in this area because them I know, but maybe some others are also in these uh, fields of activity. So you may have seen people around you uh, doing it and uh, ending up in dire personal situations. They may end up broke, they may end up burnt out, they may end up depressed. Uh, uh, very recently, we we lost a, um, we lost an eminent member of our, our family. Aaron Schwartz committed suicide two years and something ago. Uh, you, you all heard these stories. You you've seen some of us end up being detained. Uh, sometimes in embassies, sometimes in solitary confinement, and so on. So you have an idea, maybe already, of what it means to try and be active and try and change things in this world. Well. I've been doing that and I've, I've had my share. So it was epic all the way. This is how I got to, to know Marcus Beckedal. Uh, here, this is how I got this, this fusion ticket somehow. Uh, so I don't regret a thing of wh what happened in my life before. Um, but I ended up after these years in a situation where after not seeing a doctor in five years, I saw five in one year. I will spare the details about these months of acute diarrhea because you don't speak about diarrhea in an open microphone. But uh, <laughs> it went to an abrasion of cornea, uh, a broken rib, an acute bronchitis, and all the shit coming at once telling me, vut, 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 stop, 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 stop. And this is what I had to do because I ignored the milder signals for too, young, uh, for too long. So this is what happens to you when you burn out, you, you push the machine, uh, you push yourself a little bit too far, and a little bit more, and a little bit too far, and a little bit more, and more, and more, and more. And sometimes, uh, something non-trivial brings you back to reality. 
something that becomes immediately more important than what was important uh, just before. And something that uh, doesn't only have an impact on yourself. Uh, just a second. So it has an impact on yourself because uh, you will basically blow, blow up in flames. You will end up just being able to sleep, not being able to, 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 to react uh, to, to, to whatever is around you. It will hurt you, that's, that's obvious. But it will also hurt the people around you because it makes you more uh, irritable, uh, more aggressive. It makes you make mistakes because you sleep so little. I had those weeks, maybe Marcus knows that as well, those weeks where you sleep three hours, then three hours, then three hours, and take these power naps in, a, in an airplane, in a train, or waiting for a train, or waiting for an airplane, and try and survive like this. Well, then when somebody comes and speak to you and ask you where, where is the cold beer, you may just answer like, Argh! get the fucking beer already. Um, so it, it hurts you, it hurts the people around you, and of course it hurts the cause. Uh, whatever you're defending, whatever you're standing for, whatever you want to try and change in this world will be hurt when you'll be forced to stop. So this is the story of my, of my life, and I do not intend of telling you about myself and my life here. But while this was happening to me, I met this amazing friend of mine, Emily. Some of you may have met her at one of those uh, chaos communication uh, congresses or camp. Uh, Emily is a massage artist and a massage practitioner. Uh, massage is what she does. She has uh, a feeling for people and their, their bodies and energies, and she, she learned a tremendous amount of different techniques. Uh, she mixes techniques, she teaches those techniques as well. And when I met her, I figured that even if I knew uh, how to hack computers, software, parliaments, political systems, graphic design and whatnot, I had no idea on how to hack massage, what, is, what it is about. And when we met, she told me that all cause of defending freedoms online, and in a more general sense, uh, freedom of expression and, and whistleblowers and WikiLeaks, was something extremely dear to her heart, and that she wanted somehow to contribute to our causes and to our communities. But what she does is massage. And she told me, I'm not a hacker, so I cannot help you. And then I told her about my burnout, and she asked me, oh, you want a massage? So I thought about it for a minute. I'm not very familiar. I wasn't very familiar with massage. And I said, yeah, I, I think, I, think I, I would, yeah. I think it would, yeah, really, really. And she gave me one hour of, of a full massage after which I ended up in a, in a fetal position <laughs> and fell asleep with my uh, heartbeat being as low as it hasn't been for, for years, just being focused on my center and just feeling good for some moment. Uh, I opened my eyes and looked at her and told her, well, you're a hacker. Uh, she understands the system, tries to make it work better, uh, pushes things here and there, uses her own mix, remix of techniques, puts them together. And, and when I said that to her, I saw in her, in her eyes a, uh, ha, huh. ha, huh. like she hadn't thought of it uh, earlier. I think it was a aha moment in which uh, God defined what I'm here to tell you about, and it was way too long of an introduction. Uh, especially since we all need to go dancing. Um, um, that's hacking with care. So we had this idea that maybe Emily could find a way to contribute what she has to contribute to us, massage. And maybe I could be part of uh, not only guiding her towards that, but make it clear uh, that it is a primary strategic objective for all movements today. So. That's hacking with care. The point is to bring care, uh, and I'm going to define that a little bit uh, later, bringing care in the most general sense to hackers, activists, whistleblowers, people who are particularly exposed and who may particularly need it. But we feel like we cannot properly do that if we do not, on the other hand, bring the hacker ethics and the hacker tools to the caregivers, and I'm gonna explain why. So, first of all, what is care? Um, so I'm sure there are plenty of startups in the Silicon Valley who are already trying to, to uh, extract 
this value and turn it into uh, juicy profits or something. Uh, but so far, care has been either uh, provided by state or um, depending on various structures, some call it community care. Uh, but again, let's, let's take a very broad definition of what care may be. Community care, self-care, it's one of the same thing. While discussing it with Emily, what came to her mind as the most straightforward uh, definition would be kindness. Kindness, the, the, the mere fact to be kind, to try and project kindness to another human being. It can be in any context. You probably do it every day. I wish, I wish you do it every day. When you go and buy a, a Brutchen or, or anything and just have an extra smile, that is not part of the price of the Brutchen because somebody's working hard on the other side of the counter. Um, kindness could, could be to, to lend a, an ear to, to a friend or to somebody in need. It could be lending a, a, a sweater or um, a, a picket for a tent or a, or a bottle of water when somebody's <laughs> on the dance floor. Um, Kindness in, in many forms is uh, very human ways of just being there for each other. So, Emily practices massage um, and I've discovered massage to, to her contact. Uh, some forms of massage of hands, uh, actually you, you get to know when you get into massage and into hand massage that the hands start here, but ends, ends there. On the, the shoulder, so all, all this technically is the hand. Some tendons go go all there. So some massage of the of the hand are fantastic when you spend your day cramped on on a laptop with with a keyboard. Uh, some other are super useful when you when you carry a backpack full of laptops all, all day long. Um, so far, we have um, we have n not only Emily, other massage uh, practitioners are are part of our little crew. Uh, also, yoga practitioners, Chinese medicine practitioners. Um, I always get the terms wrong when it comes to uh, psychotherapists. Uh, don't beat me if I think it's psychotherapists. There are very different uh, functions and schools here. Uh, so we, we are more or less recruiting a bunch of people who are interested in this. And because we started with Emily, with massage practitioner, doesn't mean at all that we, we plan on restricting the notion of care to massage itself. So that's, that's the idea. That's the, the vision we have of care. Care as something um, tactical that we want to bring uh, within the activist uh, communities, within the, the hacker communities, and uh, as close as can be to, to whistleblowers and other people, particularly exposed. So why? Uh, why these people? I won't uh, joke uh, telling that those people are our targets uh, uh, with Hacking With Care because most of the peop those people are actual targets of uh, organizations and uh, uh, other structures that like to see people as targets. But you see what I mean by here? Uh, many in our communities are exposed to pressure that are way higher uh, than uh, everybody's pressure. When you have uh, the Department of Defense or the Department of Justice from the US of fucking A uh, that is running against you full time like they did against Aaron Schwartz, or like they do still to this day against Julian Assange or others. Um, of course, you don't, you don't go to bed the, the same way. You don't fall asleep the same way. Of course, your body holds tensions in different ways. Of course, uh, you, you, will, you will be stressed and ha have on yourself symptoms of this stress. But not only this, uh, if we try and do things right, when we organize ourselves, uh, whichever movement we are part of, whatever cause we are standing for, you know that we have to be somehow careful with our private communications, right? Uh, who doesn't encrypt their communications here? <laughs> yeah, so you know that. Uh, who does end-to-end -end encryption using free software and decentralized services? Ah. I see a few hands. Well, so you see there's lots of work left to do here. If we do things right, we cannot, or a revolution won't be Facebooked. Or a revolution won't be brought to you by Twitter or YouTube or those centralized monsters. Uh, we know that already. 
So not only we have to, to encrypt our data and our communications, but it means that by doing so, we, we protect ourselves and we protect the others. We protect the ones we care about. We protect the ones we, we fight with. We protect the ones we organize with. We protect the, the ones who are our sources, who may be endangered. And this is an extra pressure. This is an extra burden. When you have to keep your cryptographic keys and otherwise cryptographic material for yourself, it's not just potentially your life that is at stake. It's the life of the people you care for and you stand for. So this is an emotional burden that is very hard even to describe, uh, let alone to, to, to live with. Uh, this type of constraints also amounts to some, sometimes carrying a laptop at all time with you because you must not let go of the physical control of the, of the machine if you want to assume some level of security and some level of trust. Yeah, w what happens when you have to carry three laptops with you at all time, not leave them in a hotel room, not go to a sauna? Um, this is what we want to, to focus on, uh, our energy on because we've been uh, ourselves exposed to such insane rhythms and also because what, what we, we think is that this is at, at the edge of those practices and those organizations and those fights that uh, lies some hope uh, that we can replicate to society as a whole. So, um, as, as Emily puts it, care is something transitive. Uh, Emily, with her a massage, cannot get a friend of ours outside of prison. But she can make a member of that person's uh, family or that person's lawyer to feel better for some time during a day. And by helping that person, by making that person feel better, she hopes that indirectly it will have a positive consequence on the well-being of that person we want to have freed from jail. So it is this idea that whatever you have to contribute, whatever you feel like contributing, whatever you, you know how to do, there is probably a way you can contribute it, even if you feel disempowered because you don't know about computers, because you don't know about programming, because you don't know about encryption. Um, that's not the point here. And actually, that's the, that's the spirit. That's the spirit of hacking. That's the, the very essence of what we mean by hacking. It's not hacking like uh, just coding or, or breaking stuff. Hacking in the purest uh, essential form uh, is curiosity, is a playful, a joyful curiosity of trying to, to understand things, understand how they work, try and make them work better. Hacking is about sharing knowledge, it's about pursuing this objective of accumulating and sharing knowledge. And this is something that, that is done, that has to be done in a joyful way. And if we lose that from, from sight, I think there is no way we will win or, or fight whatever our fights are. And, and so the, the funny bit is that since I know Emily, I learned a fucking lot about massage and she learned a fucking lot about cryptography and operational security. And sometimes she lectures me. Like, oh no, I, I, no, no, I wouldn't mention this thing over this channel now. And she's, she's the one shing me because I was to engage in some insecure behavior or something. So she got that amazingly well. And, and, and it has to, to go in, in every possible direction. It's not just about Emily and myself. Um, so we plan on bringing uh, care in the, the, the widest definition uh, so care as kindness, care as well-being, care as a, as a shared energy, as a shared vibration, as shared humanities uh, to these exposed people. And the other way around, as I told you earlier, we want to bring hacker ethics and hacker tools to the caregivers. That's what happened with Emily. But you have to understand that if we want more massage geniuses, uh, more uh, yoga teachers, more uh, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners or uh, whatever motion therapist or psychotherapist to be able to get in contact with our friends on the front line who are exposed today, who are at risk of burning out, of being depressed, 
of committing suicide. If we want them to be reached, those caregivers have to learn a few things about removing the battery from their phone, about encrypting their communications, about not taking notes on a computer. So that's the objective. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to discuss. I'll, I'll let the, the microphone to the floor and we'll go dancing uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but I, I'm willing to, to hear you about this as fundamental strategic objectives for our causes and our fights, whatever our causes and our fights are. Now, how do we do it? And what is concretely hacking with care? So it's an informal collective. It started with Emily and myself. And as I told you, uh, Oh, beautiful people from beautiful various horizons have joined us. We are about uh, 70 to 90 people on the mailing list, um, people from many different horizons. What we want to do is A, to create occasions, and I'll go back to this, uh, B, to um, uh, gather and aggregate and, and create resources, and C, to engage in some, uh, let's call them research activities, but it's a bit uh, pompous. Uh, we, we want to create occasions uh, that can be individual occasions. And in the last three years, uh, yeah, this encounter with Emily was about three years ago. And in the last, let's say roughly three years, um, we, we matured the project. So in, in those years, we've been engaged on uh, quite, quite some individual actions just friends in all circles that were not feeling well, that were nearing burnout, depression, or that were right into it. People we felt were at risk, people who called for help, people who didn't dare to call for help. Um, and we engaged in uh, more or less long, sometimes one discussion on a, on a corner of a, of a dark bar with a vodka mate or uh, a, a single malt whiskey or sparkling wasser or anything. Uh, sometimes spending days uh, practicing massage and uh, uh, reacting to, to panic attacks and anxiety attacks and, and helping uh, things let go by uh, very careful um, uh, attention and listening and, you know, and cooking and bringing flowers and, and whatnot. So some individual actions that you'll understand I'll, I, I won't speak about for obvious reasons of privacy. Um, and also collective uh, occasions, uh, sometimes in small circles, sometimes in wider uh, open circles. Um, when, when we met with Emilia and I called her a hacker, I immediately invited her to a hacker camp in the Netherlands, the OHM where we uh, somehow launched Hacking With Care by just practicing massage uh, in the open, uh, inviting hackers to join us for some uh, hot tea in a tea house. We improvised with a few cushions and, and, uh, and electric uh, kettles and delicious, delicious uh, um, caffeinated and non-caffeinated goods. Um, we, we improvised... Um, events in which we, uh, we learned and shared a uh, massage in which we could talk about our, our ailments or pains and such. We've done it again at a few hacker congresses, the, the, uh, the Chaos Communication Congresses. If you live anywhere uh, in, in, in the, the, the region or in, in the world, you probably know about these events. Uh, the Logan CIGES Symposium in, in London and in, in Berlin um, and some other venues where we just uh, organized sessions and events. Uh, we want to do more of that, and we want to do more sessions that will be um, uh, directed towards uh, caregivers. We want to organize crypto care parties uh, where people may uh, give massage or advice about uh, posture or movements or whatnot and uh, learn about uh, encrypting their, their communications. Um, we, we want to organize an event uh, in Berlin, uh, uh, I think it's 2 to 4 of September. It's not exactly set yet. If you give me some uh, contact detail, I may subscribe you to a mailing list. It's all very informal. There is a bloody Schmwitter account and so on. But we, we'll speak about that later. Uh, the first weekend of September, we hope to organize a two or three days uh, gathering where we can have open sessions to discuss all this, uh, engage into uh, collective workshops, maybe individual sessions uh, as well. Uh, we also uh, aggregate and produce uh, resources uh, the way hackers do 
So uh, we have a mailing list, we have a wiki, we have pads. Um, um, but that's not the tool that defines the, the function, obviously. So we, we're gathering links, some related to massage, some related to posture, some related to, to breathing, some uh, related to anxiety, stress, burnout, and so on. Uh, we edited uh, with, um, Emily lives in, in uh, Porto in Portugal. I, I keep speaking about her uh, as she, she was here right now, I wish. And um, yeah, maybe if there is another fusion, she, she, she'll, she'll join. And um, it's embarrassing to speak uh, about somebody who is not here. So she lives in Porto, in Portugal right now. And uh, an amazing friend of her designed those beautiful, very simple uh, um, drawings of the, of the hands to illustrate this uh, hand massage guide that I wish I had in, in paper with me right now, but that you can download in PDF form and print yourself. Um, which is a very, very beautiful and useful guide uh, that describes hand massage, again, as a tactical tool, as something you can use uh, in between hours of work, in some office space, uh, in a train, in a plane, uh, waiting to, to, to go for a live interview on TV or whatnot. It's something that you can gift to someone. Um, and it's something, again, that is uh, fundamentally uh, tactical. We have a, a video that I nicknamed the, the boot sequence, uh, like, you know, when computers initialize all of their resources when you turn them on. Uh, well, when, you, when you, you're, you, you boot up in the morning, when you wake up, it's, it's a um, series of movements that will go one by one on all the articulations of all the, well, all the parts of your body, basically. So Emily recorded it with a mask face of Julian Assange to add a little bit spice to the, to the exercise. Uh, and that's the spirit. We want to, to keep having fun doing it, make it, uh, make it uh, clear, make it reusable, make it remixable, uh, make it tactical. And you're, uh, you understand this at this stage, uh, all very welcome uh, to join and participate. Um, also, we, we, we want, and that's the, the, the third and, and last uh, angle of this, engage in some activities related to research. Because I mentioned earlier, burnout, 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 burnout. Uh, we all heard of burnout. Maybe many of us were in contact with somebody we, we, who burnt out. But I think to this day, there is no uh, medical explanation. There is no uh, psychological, there is not one size fits all description of what burnout is. What we know is that it's a state in which you're considered unproductive for society or something. A state in which you're outside of what you were before. But it can take many shapes. So describing in more details what is a burnout for an activist, for a hacker, for somebody who is exposed to this type of political and, and otherwise pressure is something we'd like to do uh, more precisely. Also describe what it is, uh, this burden of the security to have to remain uh, in, 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 in control of your hardware, to have to keep your uh, uh, cryptographic materials, to, to impose yourself to speak only on authenticated, uh, secure uh, um, uh, channels and not use Twitter direct messages or SMS or whatnot because you know it's insecure. And, but what happens to us as human beings? What's the, the effect of this self-censorship? What does it bring in terms of isolation? Sometimes, what does it do when somebody already feels depressed or, uh, or isolated or whatever? And uh, more broadly, uh, what, what happens when we mix a joyful bunch of people interested in uh, hacking, activism, massage, Chinese medicine, and that we all uh, try to, to make um, uh, things out of it? Um, so this is the kind of research we want to engage in. So. Um, as, as a bit of a conclusion, and, and it's, it's not like I, I would be forgetting anything because there's, I, 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 we could speak about it forever and you understand that. Um, and not to speak about myself again for too long, I understood when I was about to die of burnout that if I let myself die, I would be much less helpful for anything I would try to be helpful for. And understanding that made me made adjustments in my life. Um, I, I rebooted somehow. I now live in Berlin, which is, as you may know, <laughs> way cooler than anything else in the world. Um, um, so I took some measures for myself, as well as I took some measures for the people around myself. As I told you, I had heard people in the past uh, 
Uh, with my burnout, with my uh, stress, with my sleep deprivation, with my anxieties, I had behaved to others with the same kind of violence I imposed on myself, and I tried to fix that. I tried to fix that as much as I could. Uh, in some cases, I, I'm afraid it, it's unfixable. Uh, time will tell. Um, but while I was trying to fix myself and fixing people around, I thought that this is maybe the way we will fix uh, things on a wider uh, scale and on a wider range. And I came to this, uh, it's a half-baked theory of mine. Uh, maybe it's becoming a philosophy of life or something. But that if I'm not able to do it well for myself, and if I'm not able to do it well for the people around myself, whatever it is I'm trying to do, I will not be able to do it for the rest of the world. So it's about uh, somehow being modest. It's about being humble. It's about looking at what we have under our feet at a given moment. It's about looking for balance. It's about looking for a center. And it's about actively doing these things and doing it for ourselves humbly, enabled to do it with the people around. And maybe, maybe, enables to do it with and for the rest of the world. So I don't know what is your definition of activism. I don't know what is your plan for a cause or for a, a, a just fight. But I hope this resonates within, within, uh, within your definition. So the conclusion of my conclusion um, is that not only we could try uh, uh, or keep on trying at hacking ourselves, hacking our, our bodies and our souls in order to be better uh, with ourselves, with others, and at whatever we're doing. Not only we, we could and should maybe do it today, but also I wish that this is something we keep in mind in the future, when we will build our next social movements, our next actions, our next causes, our next fights, when we will learn from the errors we've made and from the errors we are making today. I wish we find these ways to embed in our future fights those principles and that uh, by being kind, uh, by being human, by being gentle, uh, we may um, have way more chances of um, um, uh, succeeding at what we do and, and feeling better and joyful at doing it. It's time we, we discuss and dance. Um. So again, we can speak about this anytime on the corner of a dance floor. If you, if you have some, some vodka and I have uh, some rhabarb saft shawl, uh, <laughs> You know, we can sit down and, or oh, whatever, you don't need the vodka, really. So uh, <laughs> if I'm not napping or anything, feel free to, to come and discuss these things uh, anytime. We don't have to, to stay here uh, uh, away from the sound systems. Uh, but if you have any uh, comments on a, on a, a deep strategic uh, level or on a light tactical uh, uh, way or about anything, if you have suggestions, trolls, please troll. Um, I have the, the other microphone here, so okay. yeah, I would pass it around if you have any deep strategic... <laughs> or trolling, or, or a song. Oh. Hi. Is, is it on? Yeah, all right. Um, thanks very much. I think also, now you know, um, mixing, questioning with uh, arguing. Um, I think in the whole, I think, I think hacker and developer scene, like emotions and respecting each other is really hard to, I don't know, inject. Especially if you see some discussions of, about code of conduct, conducts and stuff and like that, which is... Don't get me started. I don't know, it's really incredible how some developers still argue about that, but, but, you know, yeah. Mm. Um... But, so thanks very much for this. I think that's really great input. Um, is there any link or yes. so? 
um, how to find uh, the project and how to get involved? Like that's an excellent question, my friend. Okay, thanks. Uh, and, and, and uh, thank you very much for this. And yeah, thanks for your your comment in general. It's true that many of us come from personal backgrounds where uh, our best friend was a machine, uh, where we we favored uh, the learning of the machines over some. Um, how do they call it? Uh, sp 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 sport? Sport? Or th these kind of things? <laughs> or any form of social interaction? And it's true that those things have to be learned. Um, I've uh, the, the, a very warm and hopeful feeling about that. If I take just one uh, big subset of these communities that is the Chaos Communication Congress, I'm a noob. I've only been there for the last uh, seven or eight or uh, not even ten years. But o over these years, I've I've witnessed a, a, a tremendous increase on on uh, how those questions are being discussed um, and how people are getting more and more open as the the population diversifies. Of course, it's not fully balanced yet, but we we come from a very long way, and I think year after year things are getting better. So I think we're learning that, uh, and that we we can keep on learning that in a in a joyful and harmonious way, uh, maybe without requiring that people uh, get some authority to draft some codes like we draft computer code because you know sometimes there are bugs and unforeseen consequences and there are many things that must be discussed around those issues but still we have these discussions and I think this is uh, um, uh, this is giving hope. Uh, the resources are uh, mostly located on hackingwithcare.in, like India for, for some reason, don't ask me why. Uh, hackingwithcare.in, I hope that if you look for Hacking With Care, I'm, I'm sad to say that we have a, a Twitter account uh, because it's evil and centralized um, and is surveilling you. Um, but we do have one, uh, so you'll find uh, the, the website is fugly. If you have some spare cycles to, to, to donate about WordPress or anything, please also, uh, please help. Um, we have a mailing list that will be the, the best way of discussing all this and this event of, uh, in Berlin that will be uh, um, announced. Uh, let me share with you quickly before the next question. There are many other questions, I'm sure. Let me share with you one um, tactical tool I've developed with a few friends of mine uh, when it comes to empowerment, you know, encountering those bad energies you, you can take all day when you fight in those gloomy parliaments or all those evil laws of, of the shit. Uh, evil laughter. You see those uh, evil overlords um, in, the, in those movies, you know, how, how character, character, characteristically they, they laugh when they feel like conquering the world. You know, it's, it's one way of taking a very deep breath and feeling, feeling like, like you were about to conquer the world. You know, Wh whatever is your conspiracy, whatever is your plan, whatever is your fight, gather your close friends, your, your circle of trust and... <laughs> Come on, try it, try it a bit. <laughs> Feels good, huh? No, okay, that's silly. Uh, I see there are questions still. A, mi a billion questions. Hi, Jeremy. Thanks hey, for Fabrizio. the talk. Hi. I see always your activity and also the massage and the tea. And I was wondering this hacker activism sometimes goes in the direction of other areas, not only computer. And the question of food, eating, hack farmers, is there some things that you know? Is it a part of hack of care that we provide our food? How do you uh -huh. see this subject? I, I, I'm surprised you're not mentioning yerba mate. <laughs> 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 well, I've, I, I've been hacking myself uh, with, with food. This was an extremely important part of my recovery. I, I'm, I love food, you know, and uh, I come from France, and if there is one thing about France, you can forget all the rest, raw milk cheese. You know, there's really, really, really something about French cheese. And uh, yeah, yeah, mm. meet you around some Gapron or, or Saint-Nectaire 
anytime. Uh, so I, I used to love that before I was raised that way. My mom always made me try uh, weird foods and I'm, I'm very uh, uh, thankful about that. So I have a taste for that, you know, I like kimchi and natto and those things that people usually don't like. So fortunately, well, when I was... Uh, 300 miles per hour, uh, my, my record was to take 70 phone calls in one day, 70 interviews, 70 phone calls from journalists. I had many days at 50 phone calls. Uh, but when I was doing those three hours, three hours, three hours, and 50 phone calls, and uh, once six TV sets in the same day, once nine trains and four planes in one week, in those moments, I stopped caring about food completely. I would be eating, eating not any crap because I have quite high standards. You wouldn't see me eating meat in a fast food, for instance, or fast food in general, unless it's made with love at the street corner or something like this. But I was really caring much, much, much less. When I burnt out and decided I had to change rhythm, one of the first things I started doing was get a rice cooker, get to my fucking bio market, get a shitload of vegetables and start chopping. So it was part of my personal strategy. That's something I recommend to anything, to, to anyone. When, when my friends are feeling low, when I see them close to burnout, I come with them with some food. We have food together. I think it's a very important part of any social ritual, any, any act of sharing something. Uh, if you can uh, have some food before having, giving a massage, it will be overall a better massage. So, uh, so far, it's not formally part of Hacking with Care, but maybe you want to join the mailing list and suggest this and start editing a wiki page. That's really the way it can and should and could have, could have, would have, should have, could happen in general. Um, well, the closest we, we've done so far, and, and you know that very well, is the tea at the tea house at the tea house that we've put up for uh, five occasions now to Hacker Camp, including the glorious Chaos Communication Camp. Well, in comparison to Fusion, yes, it's still very, very glorious and it's the best Hacker Camp in the world. But I mean, yeah, Fusion is, oh, oh boy, let's go dancing. Um, so we've done the tea house uh, five times and we now are used to go back from the tea house with more tea than we brought in more diversity and more overall because so many people come and contribute tea. We have those uh, rosebuds, uh, we have this Tulsi, this amazing Jaogulan, this uh, uh, Kukicha Rigane from Japan, this subtle green tea. And we're just learning how to hack it like everything else. I, I never was a tea expert, I learn as I go. And we're somehow instilling this culture of tea in the hacker event and have people who come back, what was the name again of this non-caffeinated thing? Oh, the Jaogulan, yeah, let's have some. So somehow we are already hacking ourselves with plants. And we have uh, recent additions to the crew who are uh, plant uh, experts, witches, and uh, who will bring some blends at the next Congress. And I can't wait to see, to see that. So I think it's, that's the spirit, yes. And thanks for that contribution, I'll keep that in mind. Is there another question? No. Jeremy. Oh, yes, it is. There is. Bernadette. It's more a comment, though. Uh, and also, I missed the start, so you maybe... It's okay, there was nothing interesting anyway. Did, <laughs> did you mention the whole hackerspace thing? Because that I find very important, especially then you started talking about food. So um, I think that's also a really, really important part of this whole thing of like taking care for each other because you're kind of living together and um, you're kind of sharing your living room, your workspace with a lot of other people um, who'd be sharing just occasionally or also just regularly. But um, so you're kind of sharing the life so you get to know if someone isn't feeling really well and you like cook together and do all these all these things so yeah recommendation for everyone especially the ones who are here now because they are interested and not that much into the scene go and check out your local hacker space and um be part of that family and group even though you're not feeling like being a hacker right now or something um and in either way, like try to support your local hacker space as well. And we need more. 
Thank you so much for this input. It's invaluable. Uh, you miss nothing because I spent the, the, the 30 minutes telling them they should be dancing at this time. And it's, it's silly to be sitting and discussing content. But yes, a hundred times yes. And thank you so much. Thank you, first of all, because I forgot to mention those occasions we are working on and that we want to make happen. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, we've been doing some tactical massage already where we, we brought massage in places where it usually doesn't go. Um, we, uh, we plan on doing some care ops. And with care ops, we plan on bringing, for instance, uh, massage workshops and training on the front line, on the field, with activist organizations in Brussels or elsewhere who are taking shit. But you made me think that we should totally do it, like do a, a hackerspace tour with hacking with, uh, with care. And if you want to help, uh, we, we just we just start doing it. So I can definitely recommend hackerspace tours. Oh. And um, also to mention, I don't know who asked that question with the like more rural hackerspaces. Like uh, it also came out of the food thingy that wants like more connected, closer to nature, and all this. Not having the hackerspace in the cellar in the mid middle of the city. That's also happening very much worldwide these days. I have the feeling, especially in in those like overcrowded countries where the cities are just lacking infrastructure more and more and where somewhere outside in the countryside as a geek you can just have electricity, good food, space and mostly as well nowadays a proper internet so you can just work from there. So yeah. Uh, it's it's also to me so relevant that it's when I met with Metalab in 2007 or 6 that they told me, oh, we see you at the camp, right? And I never heard of the chaos communication camp before. And of course, I saw them at the camp. And this was my first contact with the CCC and with this glorious, uh, that's my family now. And so, yeah, this building, uh, these, these moments, these occasions to share these humanities and this feeling of belonging is precisely part of what we are already hacking together and we must uh, hack even more. Uh, this feeling of belonging is, is a fantastic antidote uh, against so many of the, um, of, of the things we, uh, we, we face, or so much of the, of the shit we take. And yeah, thank you again so much for that, for that comment. Shall we go <laughs> dancing now? The North Tech Collective is playing at the Salon de Baile at, uh, at uh, midnight. Maybe you have other suggestions for uh, a playlist. Uh, th thanks very much for your, unless there are other questions or comments. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, please join us, bring your, your love, uh, bring your, your kindness, and let's hack with care.